Well, hello there, good people. It's your boy, Johnny J, and welcome to another epic photo adventure. Today, we're doing sunrise at this epic headland. Well, good morning. We are here on location. <sighs> There's lots of stars around and you know what that means. The cloud prediction. Oh man, let's have a look. What was it saying? <sighs> Last night when I went to bed, it was shaping up to look pretty, pretty darn good. Let's have a look here. So it's saying that Oh yeah, the clouds are really, really dropped off. So we're only gonna have about 45% medium height cloud, which is good, because that's the cloud where you get the nice color usually, that's a good height. And the low cloud is down to seven now. So, and the total cloud's 29. So yeah, oh well, that's okay. You get that on the big jobs, we're here now, we're gonna make the most of it. There is a breeze blowing, it's quite strong and I can see a few little waves moving around behind me. We'll just work with it, we'll go with the flow and uh, let's see what happens. As I always say, you get what you get and you don't get upset. set up now ready to go I've got my composition here lined up lucky I scouted this the other day otherwise I would have had any chance of finding it anyway let me walk you through what we're looking at here start off unfortunately if I underexpose this year a little bit you'll see we've got no cloud and we've got a bit of a blocker out there on the horizon what can you do it is what it is the prediction wasn't right once again or maybe it's just me maybe i'm just unlucky or maybe i'm just reading the thing wrong <laughs> who knows but anyway we're here we're doing it it's still a pretty pretty scene all right let me talk you through my composition here so this bush down here that's anchoring our scene okay and then we've got this rock in the midground here just past it on the right and then to the left, we've got this other little island rock out there. And then we've got this headland or a point that sticks out there as well. So I think there's nice balance. So something that's really important about this composition, okay, I wanted to make sure there's good separation around the island here. So my tripod height played a big part in that, okay? So the lower I would have got, it would have pushed this uh, rocky island up into the headland and that wouldn't have been as pleasing. And the reason why I've gone for this height as well, I was underexposed it a little bit there for you guys. You can see there's some bubbles. Just here, these white bubbles, which I really, really like in this gap there. So I'm actually gonna use them as a bit of a feature in the scene as well. So I think that's gonna be really, really important. I feel like this is gonna be, definitely be a long exposure. So as the sun comes up, I'm gonna add an ND filter for sure. So I'm just taking a few frames for the sky now. That's the thing that's important to me at the moment. Not too worried about the foreground. I feel like the foreground is gonna to come to life a little bit later on when we get a bit more light on it when the sun gets up, maybe close to breaking that blocker cloud there. But anyway, we'll have to play that by ear and just watch the light as the sun rises. So the main thing I'm doing right now, I'm just getting a couple of underexposed shots just for that sky. And the reason being is, if I decide to drop some stars on top or something like that, I've got that glow, that nice glow sky without that bright sun up, obviously, to, to blend some stars in, if that's what I decide I'm gonna do. I'm not sure if that's what I'm actually gonna do yet, but I'm giving myself options. 
And that's what you want to do when you're out here. You're always thinking, sort of pre-planning what you might de need or might do in post-production as well. So that's a really good tip is to think about your post-production while you're out here shooting. Because sometimes you need to do things like this, capture the sky when it's at the glow before the sun comes up because you're going to drop your stars in. One thing that is going to be an issue in the foreground, particularly when I start to use, shoot long exposure, is the uh, plant down there is actually moving. You can see the wind has really got that plant there, moving in the wind, blowing around. So that's going to be an issue with our long exposure. So what that's going to mean is I'm going to need to shoot a faster shutter speed, focusing just on the plant here in the foreground, and so I can freeze that motion and blend that back in later, because I really want that plant to be nice and sharp. I don't want to see that movement with the long exposure. So what I might do now is just take a couple for the foreground if I decide to do that time blend with the stars. And let's have a look there. Yeah, it's looking good. We're getting there. You can see those bubbles there. They are kind of cool. I'm really liking those. I hope they hang around. They look really, really cool. So I'm really liking that. Everything's nice and sharp there. Our foreground, you can see our bush has got some movement there. A little bit of movement from the wind there. So I want to get a couple of shots with a faster shutter speed for this plant in the foreground there. So what I'm going to have to do, so my ISO doesn't get too crazy, I'm already at 3200 now ISO. I've dropped my aperture down to 5.6, okay? And that's allowing me to get like 1 25th of a second. And I'm just focusing in on that plant now. And I'm just going to take a frame at that. And I'm going to play that back and zoom in on the plant there and just make sure that it's totally frozen. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. I'm liking that. That's looking really nice, actually. So that's got me a shot now with a faster shutter speed, freezing the motion for the plant. And I've also taken one for the rest of the foreground there that's nice and sharp at F8. And I've got one for my sky. If I do decide to put those together with some stars, then at least I've got those frames. Now I think it's just a matter of waiting a bit longer now. I want to see what happens when that sun gets up a little bit higher. And uh, who knows, maybe when the sun's just starting to peak, those block of clouds might be a nice time to take some frames as well. So we're not too far away from the sun popping its head up over there now. It's just starting to come up on the horizon. What I've done is I've dropped the polarizer on. If you have a look around that area where that foam is, okay, and I'll turn that circular polarizer now, you can see it's just knocking the sheen off the water there. And I really like that because it allows me to see, um, give it contrast between the water and those bubbles down there. And that's really, really important. I really want to accent those bubbles and bring them out in the frame. So, all right, here comes Mr. Sun. We are rising back there. This is exciting. It's all starting to come together now. We do actually have a couple of high clouds, but yeah, they're not going to be in the frame, unfortunately. And there's, there's a massive gap between the row of clouds on the horizon line and what you can see at the top there. And they're not really catching any color because of that cloud over there. It's all good in the hood. <laughs> all right. You'll notice my focus point too is out over here. When I focus on the plant in the foreground, all that background becomes soft. So it means I either had to use hyperfocal distance or I'm probably going to have to focus stack this one. But I'm okay with that because I'm going to shoot a faster shutter speed for my plant in the foreground anyway. So I'm going to focus on the plant in the foreground, shoot that faster shutter speed, and I'm going to focus on this rock off to the right there. You can see where my focus point is over here. And that's going to get everything else in the frame nice and sharp. All right, so even when I'm shooting my sky, I'm going to underexpose and be focusing on that rock to the right there. And then when I shoot for my mid-ground area, you could say, focusing on the rock there. And then when I get my faster shutter speed and I speed things up for this foreground, I'm going to focus down the bottom there. Those two focus points will be enough to get everything sharp front to back, as well as that faster shutter speed for my bush and sharpness in the sky. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break out an ND8 and that's going to allow me to get that longer shutter speed, which I think is going to be really, really cool. All right, so if I go back to F8, I'm getting about, about two and a half seconds now, which is good because I think two and a half seconds is going to give me that nice smooth water is what I'm after. Let's have a look now. Oh, yeah, that's exactly what I want. So if we zoom in now, the ND8 and the polarizer, two and a half seconds at the moment at F8, and I'm getting the nice... There's that foam bubbles. Unfortunately, it's moved out. It was in a bit closer here earlier. If 
but it's getting the smoothing the water out, which I really, really like. So I can bump around my aperture between F8 and F11 if I have to. You know, I can drop it down to F10 and, and move that shutter speed to keep that two, two and a half seconds as the sun rises now. And I just basically follow that process. As the light's changing, I'm shooting frames for the mid-ground, I'm shooting frames for the sky, and now we're starting to get a, get a light and our foreground plant. So let's shoot an exposure for that. So remember, I'm gonna move my focus point down onto the plant there now, because I want all that area nice and sharp. And actually, what I'm gonna do is take them filters off, okay? So that's the key here, is take them filters off so I can get that shutter speed a lot faster now. And you see I'll be able to speed it up here, looking good. So I'm actually gonna bump the ISO up to about 500 as well. And it's gonna allow me to get about 140th or something for that plant, 130th. Beautiful, so let's play that back. Our plant and foreground should be all nice and sharp now. Yep, the rocks are sharp. The plant is sharp, there's no movement there. Beautiful, absolutely love that. So I'll pop them filters back on now and we've got our faster shutter speed for our plant. So what I've actually done, I've switched around to a landscape orientation now. And what I'm gonna do is to take a couple of that. I'm actually liking that. At most locations, I try and get a landscape and portrait orientation as well. Cause maybe when the sun gets up, just starts to pierce the top of these block of clouds out there. You know, we maybe we'll get some interesting light at that as well. Well, that my friends is all she wrote. That was kind of interesting. Ended up switching around to the landscape orientation. I think that's gonna work nicely with that sun placement, but um, it's looking wonderful here right now. Really happy how things have turned out. Even though we didn't get the cloud, it's still looking nice. And I think this is gonna be a lovely shot once it's put together. All right, that's it for the field work part of this video. That sun is just beaming in now. It's screaming, Johnny, go get coffee. You need your decaf placebo. So I'm gonna go do that. And in the meantime, I'll see you guys back on the computer and I'll show you how I put this one together. All right, welcome back to the studio. Let's take a look what I put together. I've got two images for you here. The first one you can see is that time blend. I actually dropped those stars in from Fingal Island a few videos back. And um, I really like how this come out. So let me show you what was that, that was made up of. So this is our foreground here that we shot for our plant. Remember we focused in on the plant there. This is our underexposed for the bottom half of the sky, for the sky there. And this is our long exposure for all the mid ground area. And uh, then combined together, come up with this time blend here. Again, I think I've mentioned this before, but you wanna make sure the white balances really match up between your sky frame and your foreground. And uh, you can see I've had to cool things down significantly there. You can see it's quite, it's a lot warmer in this frame, but um, when you drop in that cooler sky, I had to cool down that foreground to match it. And that's not all. We've also got this photograph that I'm kind of excited about. Let's check it out. So this is the blend later on. And this is the landscape orientation we took and oh, I'm really happy how this turned out. And it just shows you, you know, you don't always need clouds. That beautiful sun peeking through just as it come up above those blocker clouds there. We got this softening of that light and that was the time to take the frame. That's why you didn't see me take it in the video because I was so rushed. I literally had about a minute to take these shots. Otherwise the sun would have got up too high and we would have had too much harsh reflection on the water. So I was taking advantage of that split second, well not split second, it was a minute. Taking advantage of that minute to get this shot. Anyway, let's have a look at what this one made up here. So we've got this one here was for our underexposed for our sky. And we've got this one here for our long exposure. You can see it looks really funky around that area. So those two were blended together. You can see that softer sun there. We're blended together and the water. And we had our foreground here as well. So, sorry. This one, that's our foreground shot here for our sharp foreground and merged together, that's what we come up with. Well, that's it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed that video. Yeah, it just proves that sometimes you can go out and get no clouds and still come home with a couple of cracking photographs. You just have to go to a good location and find some really nice foreground and mid-ground that outweighs not having those clouds and you can still create some awesome photographs. All right, if you're enjoying these videos, please leave a like, comment, leave me some feedback. If you've got a suggestion or a question, please leave them below and I'm more than happy to answer those and uh, I'll see you in the next one. All right, peace.